Hello and welcome to the Cyberhut TV. My name is Simon Moffat, founder and analyst of the Cyberhut. In our vendor introduction series, I get the actual honour and privilege to speak to some of the amazing founders of a lot of the leading identity startup vendors across the globe. And I'm absolutely thrilled to have Eric from uh, Strata Identity with me. Eric, how are we doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Simon. Oh, not at all. No, thanks for taking time out of uh, the busy world of uh, changing, you know, changing the world of identity orchestration and everything else. And the idea behind the um, vendor introduction series, for those who haven't seen it, is essentially I get to ask three really important questions uh, to Eric. Uh, and essentially, we start off with um, question number one, which is, what is the problem that Strata is trying to solve? All right. Well, that's a that's a loaded question, but <laughs> one that I think about all the time. Um, you know, I think we started this company, Simon, initially because we saw a big shift to the cloud, and what was different was multi-cloud, right? Because everyone wanted to uh, use the cloud, but avoid the lock-in. And I heard time and again that people were really frustrated because they weren't able to use the technology or the cloud provider, usually because they were somehow locked in to what they had implemented on premises. And so we saw a lot of uh, this pent up interest in moving uh, workloads to the cloud, but identity uh, was holding it back. And I think the other part of that problem is how important identity has become. And you think about now identity is the foundation of security and whether that means you could be deploying zero trust architectures, you could be doing uh, multi-factor authentication today to manage the security problem. You've got to have a really good um, way to solve the identity challenge. And then I think the other part is that now that all of the digital enterprise with digital transformation, now you have more and more dependency in the workloads in the cloud, the cost of downtime has gone through the roof and people are really worried about how do they keep their business applications available and identity being the infrastructure side of that, making sure that that identity is continuously available and resilient. So I would say it's the important part of identity. I think it's zero trust architecture, multi-cloud and continuity and resilience. I love that. That's like a, it's like a perfect storm, isn't it? Of, of multiple different different forces coming together. And obviously you know, many organizations are trying to move to the cloud, probably have a lot of cloud components, but I think as you've described, it, it doesn't it doesn't bring all the success, does it? So certainly now because identity is, is so, as you say, foundational to everything that we try and do, which sort of leads me into, into question number two is to, is why, why is this starting to become a problem now? I mean, you, you touched a little bit on the sort of cloud aspect and the importance of identity aspect, but why, why are these things, I guess, emerging now as, as larger problems? Yeah, the, the timing is really interesting. And I think you're right. It is a perfect storm. You know, on one hand, you've got all of the, um, kind of investment in cloud and that's created a much bigger attack surface. And yeah. in order to defend that, you've got to, you know, scale your defenses and make an investment that'll kind of meet the new, um, you know, the, the new expanded perimeter. Um, the second thing I'm seeing a lot of is uh, increased regulations and compliance. So I don't think that's ever going to go away. And what we're seeing is that a lot of the global um, compliance regulations that are starting, many of them start in Europe. Well, if you're a multinational company, you do business around the world. You're subject to uh, things that may not be in the nation that you're headquartered in, but compliance and regulation is, is an increasing uh, concern for, for people. And the stakes are high, right? If you are not compliant, you have bad things happen from there. Um, I think another thing is this perennial push to get rid of passwords. And, you know, I've been in identity since the mid nineties 
and you know password was the only thing you could do and eventually things like multi-factor started to come in to favor but we've gotten to the point now where everyone's got a mobile phone and those phones now are really powerful ways to uh, prove your identity and now can we get those connected to the applications and that's being a big driver right now um, and I guess the last thing is kind of the novel uh, threat that is coming in from uh, AI and generative AI and you think about all of the exploits that go into phishing attacks and to create very official sounding emails that are designed to trick you into giving your password up well if you are dealing with an adversary who has access to any of these generative AI platforms, you now have someone who can come up with these really, really clever schemes very quickly. And trying to keep up with that today is really raising the bar um, in terms of you know, what you need to do to be prepared for it. I'm not saying gen AI is bad or that it's the number one threat, but I think it's the most interesting thing that's evolved in the last, I'd say, two, three years. I think it's absolutely spot on. I think there's, there's good, good and bad parts, I guess, to, to Gen AI thing, but it, it all boils down, I guess, to what you were saying earlier around just the, the importance of identity and, and whether it's a, a Gen AI attack or some other security issue, it all ultimately boils down to identity. The, the, identity of the person, maybe of the device, the linkage to the, the assets and the systems. I think it's just amplifying how important identity is, isn't that? The authentication aspect, the identity providers, making sure they are highly available. And a good point you mentioned there around the sovereignty and, and geographically available services and resources and everything else. And I think it's, yeah, it, it, there's a huge emphasis now, isn't there, on everything being available, everything being secure, everything being on demand, which is a really difficult set of, set of things to, to deal with. So I guess that leads us to the, to the final point, ultimately, is to what, what's, what's Strata's secret sauce? And what are you guys best placed to try and solve some of these challenges? Yeah, our, uh, our secret sauce is, I can't give it away, Simon, just kidding. <laughs> We're very open with it. Um, it really comes down to, I think, a, a couple things that um, we're very vocal about. Number one is that this is a new problem and the new problem of making all of these systems work together in this distributed way required a new approach, right? So it's not a new feature. So identity orchestration, uh, we see it as a new category. And so when you look at how do you build software in a brand new space? You really want to build it from the ground up to be the solution for the problem that you're building. And so I think from the, you know, the minute we started this company through to today, we've always been focused on identity orchestration. And that comes through in the team that we build and um, bring together to build the software but also you know, the founders and the, the team that's designing the software. And I think another part of how that shows up is because this is a distributed problem, you need a distributed architecture. And so we built our software called Mavericks to be natively distributed and be able to run in a hybrid environment so that whether your cloud is on premises or in Amazon, right, Microsoft, that you have a way to make it work that's really seamless and uh, purpose-built. And this architecture, we call it an air gap architecture, has allowed us to um, solve problems in identity that previously you couldn't uh, really do, specifically I'm talking about continuity. And so when you think about your applications where they need to have consistent access and identity, well, what if your identity provider goes down? And with this kind of architecture, you can have another failback or failover identity provider. So you can, you know, if your primary goes down, go to your secondary and go to your, you can even fail over on-prem. Well, that's all possible because we have this unique architecture that allows us to 
sit as an abstraction layer that can direct these different things in uh, real time. So I guess to net it out, Simon, it would be the purpose-built design, air gap architecture, and the distributed uh, identity framework that we built. Love that, love that. I think it's, it, it certainly sounds like it, it's, you, you've really thought about it. And, and by that, I mean, you've really looked at the, the, these modern challenges organizations are encountering and really built out quite a complex um, orchestration, that ability to, to, to navigate and stitch together lots of these different identity components. It sounds like a really, really quite a sophisticated way of tackling, I think, what are becoming very big and very important problems. I think problems which they're not going away, are they? You know, the cloud, zero trust, the importance of identity, identity and security together, uh, high availability, that stuff isn't going to change anytime soon. That's only going to become even bigger. So it sounds like you've had a real good, good deep understanding of what that looks like. Yeah, we've been really lucky, Simon, to have a, a strong background that goes many decades in identity. But I think more than anything, it's listening to our customers who mm -hmm. say they've got this problem and this is the most important problem. And where we're able to listen to what the customers are telling us, um, that's really helped us shape the right solution. So, um, in fact, we took a year of research and development before we even tried to ship our product, where all we did was interview customers and ask them what they're struggling with. So. Um, that takes a lot of patience because <laughs> the natural founder tendency is I've got an idea, I'm going to build it, but we took a different approach, which was we have a hypothesis, let's go prove it and interview to see if this problem is as widespread as we think. And once we were doing that, that really led us to build something that really, I think, solves that very specific pain point that's new. So uh, it's a lot, been a lot of fun. I love that. I love that. You, again, you say proper deep, deep dive research, and really at the end of that, as you said, take some patience. But it sounds like there's a, a hugely sophisticated set of solutions there to, to fix what I think are going to be some huge problems emerging for lots and lots of organisations going forward. So, Eric from Strata, thank you for taking some time out of your busy day. I totally appreciate how um, how busy and difficult it is to, to run startups and run uh, run these organizations essentially changing the identity security world. Eric, thank you for taking a bit of time out. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been another episode in our vendor introduction series. And until next time, thank you very much.